Hey everybody, it's Brandon. Welcome back to my channel, a place where we discuss skincare and dive deep into the research so you don't have to. So I'm holding in my hands a bottle of rosehip oil. And this brand of rosehip oil is the Kliganique. It's, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's certified USDA organic, cold pressed and unrefined chemical free. So I've been using rosehip oil for five to six years on my skin, on my face. I think I heard about it, some woman, I heard it like from a, I, somebody, somebody told me that they met a woman who used it and she was in her 40s and she had smooth skin, no lines or anything like that. And then I started doing some research into the benefits of rosehip oil. I started looking at studies. I really wanted to know about the constituents of rosehip oil to see if it actually was beneficial for the skin if it did anything. So for a while I was buying a like four, I think like a four ounce bottle of this. This is, this is one fluid ounce. And really rosehip oil, in my experience, I bought several different brands. They all tend to be the exact same. They are somewhat of a dry oil. They're not as slippery. They go on a bit, I don't want to say matte, but like they, they have a different feel to them, a different texture. And for a while I was using rosehip oil as a moisturizer, but this was at a stage in my life where I didn't really understand what a moisturizer was. Just a little disclaimer, this rosehip oil, rosehip oil, coconut oil, sesame seed oil, all these skin oils are not moisturizers in the true sense of the term. They provide one component of a moisturizer. They are emollient. So they smooth and soften the skin and they do make your skin look smoother and they can uh, you know, impart a sort of luminosity to the skin and make it look dewier and, and overall just provides a nice smoothness. But the thing about skin oils is they lack the other important com components of a moisturizer. They lack humectants, which help to bind water to the skin. This is incredibly important because we need those components like glycerin, hyaluronic acid, that at least hyaluronic acid is a key component of the skin that we need to replenish on a daily basis, especially if we're, if we're washing our skin and, and stripping it of its natural oils. And it's also missing occlusive agents. So occlusives form a thin layer over the skin and help to just trap, trap that moisture into the skin to prevent it from evaporating out. So it helps to retain moisture into the skin. All types of oils, they are limited in that capacity and that they don't provide actual moisture to the skin in the terms of H2O, like water. They just, they don't, they lack that. Oils are hydrophobic. So, so they don't mix well with water. They have to really be uh, added to things and into formulations to help, uh, you know, things like emulsifiers to help them just emulsify in and, and stay within the overall component of the, the final product. Now, while rosehip seed oil does have its limitations, there are several studies, at least that are available, freely available to, to read, that suggest that rosehip oil can actually be beneficial for the skin when used in conjunction with a moisturizer. There's another limitation of using rosehip oil or any skin oil is that if you are prone to dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis, any type of oil that you have in your skin, if it goes into your scalp, you know, if it goes into your scalp, if you're putting it on your forehead and it just trickles into your scalp, it's going to feed the yeast that are responsible for the, the seborrheic dermatitis or the, um, the dandruff. So you definitely want to be mindful if you have, if you're susceptible to dandruff or something like that, oils are going to be something that you want to avoid, especially, you know, if you are acne prone, if you have acne prone skin, oils might not be the best choice for you. Then again, there are people on the internet who swear by using rosehip oil and to clear up their acne. So it's really hard to know exactly what to believe out there, but typically oils applied to the skin for many people with sensitive skin or acne prone skin, it can cause a breakout. So you definitely want to be very mindful when you are choosing products like rosehip oil or, or any oil for that matter. So the rosehip oil is extracted from the seeds of the rose and generally seeds in nature are full of fatty acids that can be beneficial for the skin when taken orally as well as potentially when applied topically. Rosehip oil in particular contains an abundance of unsaturated fatty acids, the most abundant of which is linoleic acid. I think it's roughly 35 to 
55% of linoleic acid within the seeds of the rose, the rose hip seeds, and this is followed by alpha linoleic acid. There's roughly 15 to 20% oleic acid in there as well. These fatty acids are extremely important for skin hydration, for skin barrier repair. There's actually some research showing that linoleic acid, as well as alpha linoleic acid, both of which are within rosehip seed oil, can lighten ultraviolet induced hyperpigmentation. So the sun, the UV from the sun can actually, it helps to produce melanocytes within the skin. And for some people that can lead to blotchy spots of hyper hyperpigmentation or darkening of the skin tone. This is especially problematic people with deeper, darker skin tones, just naturally. Dietary deficiency of linoleic acid, which isn't extremely common, but it can happen. It can lead to patchy, dry skin, typical of what, typical manifestations that you would find in atopic dermatitis, as well as like itchy skin skin, things like that. Linoleic acid in particular is incredibly important for actually maintaining the skin barrier and helping to retain moisture in the skin. So theoretically applying rosehip seed oil, which is pretty robust in terms of its linoleic acid content, again, can potentially, can potentially, there definitely needs to be more research on this, but can potentially help to retain that moisture, retain that plumpness and assist the, the overall efficacy of the moisturizers that you are using. And it just helps to provide your skin an extra boost. Again, this is all theoretical. I'm not performing research in a lab, so I don't know 100% for sure. But this is what we know about the skin barrier. We know that it's made up of many different fatty acids and different components that, you know, when applied topically could potentially help to protect the skin. There's also a hefty amount of lipophilic antioxidants within rosehip oil, particularly tocopherols and carotenoids. Tocopherols are things like vitamin E, carotenoids are like vitamin vitamin A that you would see in something like, like carrots or, or bell peppers. They're typically demonstrated by their yellow, red, orange hues that the, the hues that you would see within fruit and vegetables. Now the combination of the unsaturated fatty acids as well as the antioxidants allow the rosehip oil to be highly effective against inflammation and oxidative stress. Inflammation, oxidative stress, these are key components that drive the the physical signs of aging. Approximately 80% of the physical signs of aging is attributable, is attributable to sun exposure, but sun exposure actually causes this inflammation, this oxidative stress, sugar consumption, excessive exercise, just naturally breathing, everything, a lot of things cause oxidative stress and inflammation. So when you can have something at your, dispos at your disposal that could potentially help to combat the inflammation and the free radical exposure that your skin is having to be exposed to, you know, the on slot every single day, especially like if you live in a city and that's heavily polluted, then it might behoove you to try and investigate rosehip oil to see if it might be right for you. I mean, I, I would think adjunct to what you're already doing. Again, if your skin can handle oils or if you you know don't really have too much of a problem with or a problem at all with seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff you know it might be a good oil to investigate there's actually some research showing that topical application of rosehip oil in addition to oil supplements comprising mainly fat soluble vitamins which which are uh the fat soluble vitamins are a d e and k this research showed that the topical application in combination with these vitamins was effective at helping to lower the disease burden burden in several uh, inflammatory dermatoses, so things like eczema and colitis. Some research has also shown that rosehip seed oil, when applied topically, can help in wound repair as well as in the prevention of skin lesions in in patients who are type who have type one diabetes or type two diabetes and have to prick their skin. Now, obviously, this isn't meant to be taken as doctor's advice, or you know, you definitely want to consult your your clinical dermatologist or your regular physician before you're using this, these products for any type of medical condition, you, def you definitely want to do your research and be working with a qualified healthcare provider. So rosehip oil doesn't really have a smell to it. Uh, I'll just open it up right now. Yeah, it doesn't smell like rose or anything like that. So, so you're not really going to get like, you're not really going to get any sort of aromatic benefits from this, but I would suspect that you could use this in like a massage oil. So in that sense, it could, you know, in, in a roundabout way, help you relax. And relaxation is key in helping to reduce stress. Stress is also a contributor to 
aging, the aging process, as well as a number of diseases. It can exacer exacerbate a number of diseases and it's something that you definitely want to manage effectively with as many natural approaches as you can find. So yeah, I think it would be a an, an excellent massage oil, especially if you are blending it with, with other oils. So the oil comes out a little on the orange red side and I think that's probably attributable to the carotenoids that are in here, but I'll just show you what it looks like. I don't know if you can see. Oh wait, here we go. Let's see if it will. Okay, do you see how orange, it's, it's, it's comes out as a yellow on the camera, but you see on my skin, goes on orange. I, it has to be the carotenoids. You know, that's the only explanation that I can think of. But it rubs in clear, which is nice. And it doesn't feel super oily. It has a sheen to it, but it has a sheen to it. It's just, but it, it is, it dries down really quickly and it doesn't feel super oily. Regardless, with any types of oils, you're going to have it reacting with your body temperature. So it's going to be kind of sliding off. It's going to be, it's going to be warm and, and sliding off. It's not going to stay on your skin. That's where a moisturizer would come into play. You obviously don't need, you do not need a skin oil at all. A moisturizer is going to contain emollients, which is what an oil does. It helps to soften the skin. It's going to contain emollients. So you really only need a good basic moisturizer. But if you want to take advantage of the antioxidants and the potential anti-inflammatory components within rosehip oil or any type of oil, then this would probably be a very good bet. Now, again, there are very few studies, randomized, controlled, rigorous, long-term, large studies, real-world analyses that show any type of, you know, conclusive benefit that these are the holy grail for skincare. You can really only go based upon, to be honest, anecdotal evidence. And you really just have to try it for yourself. I I like rosehip oil. I will put it on before I put on a moisturizer. So whenever I get out of the shower, I'll put it on damp skin. I have no idea if it's sticking to my skin. It probably isn't completely. Sometimes I'll put this on a dry skin. It just depends. But I will always, always wear a moisturizer. I will always put on a moisturizer that's formulated with water, occlusive agents, humectants, and emollients, usually oil-free emollients. But yeah, that is the research behind rosehip oil. I hope it helped you provide some more insight into the antioxidant components and the anti-inflammatory components of the oil. Again, I think it's a promising oil. I just don't really know, again, how stable is it? How stable are the antioxidants? Or is it going to provide long-term benefits to your skin? I really don't know this. In lieu of the large studies that we'll need to actually provide a conclusive benefit for this oil. Again, I hope this has been helpful. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Let me know your thoughts about rosehip oil. Do you use this? Do you use any other oil? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, if you want to stick around, please hit the subscribe button down below and also hit that bell icon so that you can be alerted of future videos. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.